What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We got another Wistoria reaction. The greatness is back again. Last week we were dealing with Rusty versus Colette. Some some tension there, a lot of romantic tension, which is surprising. Wasn't expecting that. And like I was saying last time, it's it's really weird because these two are fighting for Will, and I'm a hundred thousand percent positive they're fighting for second place because Elfaria has that number one spot. And honestly, I'm surprised with how close they seem to be with Will that they don't know about his feelings for Alfaria. But, you know, I'm sure they're finding out eventually, like once Will actually ends up communicating with Alfaria, they'll probably see it. So whenever that happens, if that happens, I'm sure they'll figure it out. But in the last chunk of last episode, we also got the team up with the basically top five, the, the big goats. You have Viana, you have Wingnall, you have Julius, you have Sion, and now you have Will. And so they're heading out for the practice tournament. We also have Colette joining, which I guess there's not really a like different type of requirement or a necessary team size. Because initially it was going to be five. If Colette comes at six and it seems like there's no issue with that, she kind of just forced herself along and they went with it. Of course, we'll see in this episode if they actually go along with it. I don't see them turning her away, though. But yeah, let's get into it. That voice sounds familiar. That sounds, was it Blackbeard? Yeah, I think that is Blackbeard. Although right now it sounds a lot more like All for One. Oh, they running. They all about to dive in this hole. Ooh. Yeah, they're really just launching into this hole. Off jump? Man, it's two seconds into this hole and they're fighting. I love it. Lightning speed. Don't tell me she's going to be one of my favorites. No, I love lightning. Cold? Okay. Ooh, close quarters mage. Okay, I like it. Alright, if you've never seen Silver of a Failed Knight, uh, there's a character in there, Toto, who's a basically a lightning swordsman. It just reminds me of her. Toto is my favorite character of Shibu Felt Knight. So I have high hopes for Liana. Maho. Yeah, Will showed before that he could basically not outdo Search, but he has his own version of Search. Yeah, he doesn't have a... He doesn't have the time that he had before. Like, I expected them to be competent, but I thought it would be more... Balanced, to be honest. But I do think Will's gonna come in clutch still. Obviously. Yup, yep. See, she knows. Okay, okay. He's he's getting up there. Probably. <laughs> yeah, I like her. <laughs> He has to collect everything, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, your time will come. Your time will come. These are just fodder. Scrubs. No names. Yeah, 
You always got an attitude. Wild. I felt, I think in one of the other episodes, I was thinking, like, you gonna say something racist. <laughs> but he's an equal opportunity racist. Ooh, a Cerberus. Okay. She built the Avengers because she wanted to take down this monster. So you go down and then come back up and do the light work. Collecting parts for credits? Oh, he's just analyzing. Hit. Is it already dead? Yeah, it already got mopped. All right, it's game time. Let's go. Oh, hyper beam. Is that Will's normal sword? I can't tell. Get the hilt. That thing looks boss. Ooh. Observation hockey on zero percent. Looks like Obelisk the Tormentor. Oh, we did get to him. Ooh. I don't like the sounds of this meat wall. Where is she with Colette right now? Yeah, she is okay. Will, we can all see on Julius, Colette, Liana. I wonder how crazy the monsters here are. They can't be. Well, I guess they could be. I feel like Will might struggle a little bit. I think he's still got it. I still got faith in Will. Oh, we can all flashback. Oh, is that the? I think that's the queen that they were just talking about. Yeah. Wait, what? She cut his arm off? Yeah, that's big will. Uh, still being racist, okay. So what's up with his arm? Ooh, a buster. Is that a blade? Okay, I thought those were buster swords. I mean, I would say Wingall could just fly them back up. 
I don't know how useless he is with that arm being busted. See a workner in action? I kind of want to see that. He gives me like yummy vibes with how he might play out. I'm hoping he's like mad strong. You can still use magic. Realistically speaking, if they got ambushed, they would be in a lot of trouble. But if something just walked up to them, I think either way, Will would be fine. We can the problem. Because obviously he can't handle an ambush. But if something super strong that he can't handle with magic comes along too, he's just dead weight. I'm just saying. <laughs> Okay, space it up, prioritize. Yeah, I would say fighting either way is a problem. This is big will talking, what do you mean? Always calm. I wonder how low he's been. Like, obviously, you can't come down here because it's your specialized mages. I wonder, like, because you was talking about being on level six, and I think that was a lot. Like, even that, he needed permission from Workner to go beyond, I think. So, that's probably the lowest or close to the lowest he's been. Yeah, they will like that. Hey, you need to keep your eyes in the, in the fight, but. Anybody can not. Is blind? Yep, now I'll get you. They're probably blind, especially with how like low they are here, and how dark it is. solid episode so this time around we actually get a little bit more lore on some of the, the side characters which i always like i like when we look more at side characters and kind of bring them up to elevation with characters i said liana is becoming a top five for me uh, i'm gonna see what she does in these next few episodes i think her power is cool i like her personality how like kind of removed she is I like that she's the top of the top. I I think I like the way they're they're taking her character. I need them to give her some more awesome feats, and I'll be sold. That's all I need. Uh, Wingnall seems to have some interesting backstory because it it definitely looks like the queen at some point basically said he was useless and then did something to his arm. It looks like he cut his arm off, but he has an arm. I'm not entirely sure if it's like illusion magic or what. 
Although I don't think he'd be illusion magic because it looked like it was bleeding. Like after he got hit, it looked like his arm, like the, the joint was bleeding. Pretty much where it got cut. So I wonder if there's like an artificial limb he has put on there. I, I wonder what that's all about. And I wonder why specifically she took his arm. Because she was like, your magic sucks. I'm taking your arm. I'm just like, that's that seems disproportionate. If she was just like, yeah, your magic's terrible. Give me your arm. That'll teach you. And it's always interesting to see how the the dynamic between elves and dwarves kind of exist in like anime or just just in like fiction because it, it kind of varies. There's always like some kind of animosity between elves and dwarves, but it's a matter of where they exist on the the hierarchy. For example, in Astoria, elves happen to be at the the top of the food chain, where it's like they are the, the prized race more or less, and then dwarves are looked down upon. But you go to something like Skyrim, for example, and the elves are the ones that are kind of put at the, the lower rung of humanity. And you go to Goblin Slayer, and there's not necessarily a hierarchy between elves and dwarves, but there is still that animosity. So it's always interesting to see how the, the show, the, the media will take that kind of like lore piece and run with it. And in here, Wingnall is basically, he's like racist, but he it's almost like he's a celestial dragon whereas it's not just a certain race he dislikes it's people that are beneath him that he doesn't like and he says in this episode like it's not just will it's anybody that isn't liana so even julius and sion he looks down on so it's not just like you know i hate dwarves i hate basic humans anybody that's not an elf it's just anybody that's not better than him he looks down on but it seems like next episode we're gonna get a bit more lore on Wingnall, I think we're probably going to see some more on Liana too. I don't think we need as much from Julius and Sion. They'll probably do more fighting. And then the other two groups are going to be lore heavy. Like I said, I want to see what Workner does. I want to see what's going on on uh, level eight. I They swiped them heads of the professors. Um, I don't remember what the, the, the mage that was still alive was, what her name was. She seems to be pretty strong. I think she's going to make it and they're probably going to team up with Workner and Snape. But this this Praxis took a, a really hard turn because I kind of felt like something like this was going to happen, but I thought it would be a little bit down the road. Like I kind of expected to progress where by easy bosses, we fight like a, a harder boss where Will can show his his metal and then we fight the impossible boss where everyone needs to fight together. And they kind of skipped all the way to the end. <laughs> What's interesting is that as soon as we ended up on level 11, which is like so far, everyone, even the, the top five like, mages have all been freaking out about being on level 11. And they're they're really worried about being able to fight the people that are on level 11, not the people, the, the monsters. And Will just soloed the, the snake as soon as he got here with seemingly no effort. So I don't know if that snake was like a low level type monster or what, as shown by like the, the orc pig creatures. They, I think that was more like, like I was saying, Wingnall was not paying attention to the fight. I think he probably could have handled it a little bit better if he was paying attention. But these monsters are still strong enough to have him off his game. Whereas when they first got into the dungeon, they immediately got ambushed. They handled it fine. They handled that entire situation fine. So obviously he's off his game. He's injured. He's going through a lot right now. But I do think that these monsters are stronger than your run of the mill monsters. Like they might be stronger than the level six guy we fought. And I think this actually makes sense as to why that guy was there. Because I think when they first ran into him, they said he normally lives when they were hunting for the Baskerville, they, they ran into that other creature. And they said, I think he normally lives on lower levels, but he kind of made his way up here. It's probably because whatever down, like the, the headless things that are killing everything, they're probably like wiping out all the strong stuff. And generally, when that happens, all of the like native life moves away from it. So they're heading to higher levels to escape this immediate threat here. But all in all, great episode. I'm excited to see what comes next. I think we're going to be some lower. I think we're going to get some good fighting. 
it's gonna be a good time let me know below like comment subscribe and i'll catch you in the next one peace